Three, two, one. Hey, Internet friends. This is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got somebody on. Her name is Christina Flack. Are you there? Hi. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me on today. Are you over on the West Coast? I am. I'm in sunny California. Is it sunny today? It is. It's a beautiful day. I think it might be 80. It might get to be 80 degrees today. I was out there for a couple of years. I was working on some Great. projects with a martial arts school in Glendora and then an infomercial Great. in Studio City. For a couple oh, of years. fantastic. I was down there last month. I was filming a TV show for Fox and staying with my friend who's a makeup artist and she lives in Studio City. It's a very nice area. Well, let's get to talking about that. But first, a little about you. You live in LA. How long have you been down there? I actually live in San Francisco. San Francisco. Um, I live in Marin County, which is outside of San Francisco. And um, I go down to LA to work for, you know, periodically for different projects. So I was filming a TV show for Fox Nation with Isaiah Washington called Kitchen Talk. It's kind of a new, different concept of a talk show. Uh, you know how everyone congregates to the kitchen while they're cooking? Exactly. And there's always yeah. the best conversation and no one wants to go sit in the living room. So we decided to put the TV <laughs> show in the kitchen and cook and talk. So um, it'll be airing uh, next in June on Fox Nation. And um, I had a really fun time. It was my first experience doing a TV series. I normally do, you know, commercials and fashion and photo shoots type of thing. And so I had never really you know, I've worked on TV, like for CNN, you know, all the networks, but I have never, you know, done a series, like a whole series. So it was a different experience. And I so loved you it. married and got kids too? I was married. I am uh, widowed for, um, since 2018. I was uh, married to Ken Flack. He was a professional tennis player. Uh, he um, was number one in the world with his partner Rob Seguso in the 80s and 90s. They were in the Davis Cup team. They won a gold medal in Seoul. Uh, you know, they, you know, they were amazing. And um, so Ken and I were married in 2008. I 2010 for, we were married for eight years. Uh, he sadly got um, a bronchitis, which turned into pneumonia. Um, mm. And then we had called the Kaiser Permanente, who was our doctors at the time, um, to have him seen, and they didn't see him. Um, they prescribed him the wrong medicine. They gave him cough medicine with codeine and an inhaler and no antibiotic to counter the cough medicine with codeine. Because when you take cough medicine with codeine, it slows down your breathing to the point where if you have an infection, it's going to grow like a wildfire and not be stopped. Um, my husband, it turned into sepsis. And that's what I've been doing for the past two years. Besides being a CEO and a makeup artist, I have been an advocate um, for sepsis awareness um, and actually also grief, which I didn't expect to ever be in my life. But I'm, I speak a, a lot about handling grief in a, in a more positive way. Got it. So that is what I do. Well, I didn't expect it to turn that direction, but uh, that's kind of relevant to what's going on now with this COVID stuff too. It's uh, it is a respiratory it is kind of thing. It's very a difficult time for everybody, and um, you know, I also feel like with that, I mean, I think everything with life, there's a choice of being happy and positive, and and you know, we've got this time in, so I think we need to use it to do things that we normally don't have time to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, um, I revamped my website, uh, my Pretty Girl Makeup website. I'm the CEO of a makeup company called Pretty Girl. Um, I redid all that. Um, and then I redid my other website, christinaflack.com to do virtual makeup lessons. And I've been doing a lot more interviews, um, speaking about grief and um, sepsis and, you know, what else, you know, my makeup and everything. And I've just, I'm choosing to just have this time to reflect a bit of, of how I would like my life to slow down and, and, but I still need a lot of excitement. I need things to keep me motivated and doing so. Well, that's what I've noticed. You know. A lot of people are reflecting on things and uh, these times right now, I mean, if you go into the makeup thing and the whole self-esteem thing, you need to have that kind of stuff to keep you positive in these situations. Absolutely. It can take you down a rabbit hole, especially when you're stuck at home and like I, I'm not really an extrovert kind of person. I mean, I can, I'm a Gemini, so I kind of do both. You know, I'm a Oh, uh, that's magician. what my husband was. What, when's your birthday? June 19th. Oh, okay. You going to send me something? <laughs> no, I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. 
but I, I, I play both Big sides, introvert, extrovert. And I yes. sometimes just need to get out to the coffee shop or something. It's just, uh, just to be around people. I don't necessarily need to get it's into It's hard. It's hard for people that are people, people, people to have so much time that you feel so isolated and mm -hmm. it can get very depressing and it's, it's hard. You know, you don't realize how much your interaction with people actually affects your moods. And so that's why I'm telling people when I, you know, I've told my children and my friends. And then, you know, when I do these interviews that like, I think that we should stay on our normal schedule, wake up at the same time, oh. get dressed and get showered, put on your makeup, make your bed, eat well, exercise, everything. It doesn't need to go upside down. So what yep. you can control in a positive way, I think this is especially important during this time to, you know, keep your life as, as balanced as possible. So I think that's the only way you can survive this without having everything go crazy and feel out of control. Yeah, because it will go into a spiral. You'll get, uh, you know, you sleep in longer and pretty soon you don't even get out of bed. You just, it, it can get it's, that way. You so. can get into a very dark, depressed place. And, you yeah. know, I just try to avoid that because, you know, I've dealt with that, you know, after uh, my husband died, my son had passed away. Um, 13 years ago, um, my mother passed away. So I am very familiar with grief and dealing with difficult times. And, you know, when I dealt with my mother, it was horrible. But with a parent, you kind of expect it at a certain point in your life. And then when my son died, like that was just horrible because he was four and a half month old baby and it was Christmas day. So that was really, oh, really wow. difficult. And so I knew that, you know, I had gone through such a dark place when my son Bo passed away. Um, I started taking pills to just not feel anything. And then I, you know, after a month of that, my girlfriends all stepped in and said, okay, enough with you and this wallowing, get your ass together. And, you know, you have children and a husband, you need to like be your best self and you're certainly not being it. So I, you know, I put, totally got myself back together. I started being as disciplined as I normally am. I started um, with my friend, Lisa Zimmer. She's a principal at, uh, at the time at uh, the Edna McGuire School in Mill Valley. We started um, an outdoor garden and classroom, which is named after my son, Bo. Uh, it's the Bo Friedman Outdoor Classroom. And um, I really feel that people forget um, especially babies. People don't want to talk about the death of a baby, but I wanted to honor my baby and keep his memory alive. And the best way for me to do that was, you know, with the garden, I want children to have the same experiences. I think they're important to have experiences, not just learning things in a textbook. I feel that, you know, learning to garden and picking vegetables and fruit and, you know, seeing chickens lay eggs and, uh, you know, fruit trees that they can eat during snack is just such a huge important piece of, of growing up and becoming a healthy adult. So oh, I uh, started that and then I started a, the Bo Friedman, the Baby Bo Fund. Uh, it's an educational fund at the Northern Lights School in Oakland, California. It's a minority, uh, it's a private school, but predominantly for minority children. Um, everyone there, almost 90% of the students are there on scholarship. So they're constantly trying to raise money and funds to keep the school afloat. And so I just felt like that would be a really great way to, to honor my son. And then after Ken passed, I, I started a Ken Flack fund there. So my son, Bo, uh, was, a, was a twin. Um, and so Ben, my other son, my youngest, my littlest little, as I refer to him, he, uh, there's a Vita Blue Celebrity Golf Tournament every October, and Ben raised $35,500 um, in one day playing golf and for his brother and his dad's foundations. And it's extraordinary because that money is going to enable three children to go to private school for an entire year, wow. which changes their lives and communities in the world. And so I just feel like the best thing as a parent to do is to set an example of, you know, doing do-goodery, as I like to call it, and, and you know, helping other people and, and making other people in the world a better place. So I'm very proud of my son. And all my kids have been involved um, in some aspect of Northern Light School. So it's, it's really great. 
Well, when I do these interviews, I end up meeting a lot of different people and different walks of life, but you kind of did a right turn on me. I thought we were going to talk about makeup and um, you were, you're a very busy. Oh, we can busy, totally talk about makeup. I mean, you're just a very busy, uh, you got a lot of things going on. <laughs> yes, I'm <laughs> absolutely happy to shift into the makeup lane. <laughs> Well, it's interesting because my, my brain tends to meld things together again because of that Gemini thing. I'm not all emotion and I'm not all logic. It kind of goes hand in hand with both of them. Oh, I was married to one. Believe me, I know how you people work. <laughs> so I can see how this, uh, this the makeup and the self-esteem thing goes into like a positive because uh, you seem very together. You don't seem like you're all falling apart. It sounds like you've had some chaotic things happen in your life and you just keep it going and you're you're very uh, interested in helping other people get past this stuff and all these fundraisers and all that kind of stuff. Right. Well, I think it's part of the grieving process. Um, I think it helps me, but it's also, and it's like as a makeup artist, part of my job besides, you know, having makeup skills to make the person look and look good. Um, I also have to have them feel good. They need to feel good on the inside because you always photograph much better if you are in a good energetically and I know that may sound crazy but it's it's it. true when someone's my in a good mood they photograph <laughs> my wife better. is a shaman and, so <laughs> oh so you totally get that whole energy thing so you know I part of my job is to figure out how can I get my client in my makeup chair to be at their peaking when they get in front of the camera and sometimes they need some aromatherapy for me to like massage their hands get them a cup of tea listen to them or sometimes there's silence and I need to figure that out rather quickly when I get my client in the chair. I have to figure out, you know, what. So I, you know, I, I do work with a lot of celebrities and athletes and chefs. Um, I've had Condoleezza Rice, Hilary Swank, uh, Ted Cruz, Metallica Journey, Tyler Florence, uh, Jalen Brown. I've had, you know, oh. I've worked for Gucci and Louis Vuitton. So I work with a lot of interesting people, which is one of the absolute blessings of my job to just meet these extraordinary people and have alone time with them that, you know, you, how often is anyone going to get, you know, an hour with Condoleezza Rice or Hillary Swank in their chair? Not too often. So it's, well, I can see how that stuff can come in the, the energetics with it and keeping someone upbeat and everything with the, with the makeup and things, because it, and, and a makeup artist is an artist. It isn't just a matter of putting the stuff on. I mean, I, I'm not a makeup person at all, but I understand that, that you got to know what you're doing. Otherwise, it doesn't look natural. If it doesn't look Absolutely. natural, it looks bad. And that makes a person feel depressed. And then, oh, my God, it looks Absolutely. so weird because my eyebrows are all weird. So it's got to no, be No, it's true. Um, the, you know, especially you want the, the best thing that you can do as a makeup artist is for someone not to notice your work. You know what I mean? Just like exactly. they go, wow, they just look nice, but it doesn't look like, oh, they've got a lot of eye makeup or blush or, ooh, that's pink lipstick. You don't, I just like my clients to go out just looking like, wow, they look fresh and happy and dewy and look great. Do, do you set the mood with the aromatherapy and the, the, the energetics and stuff before you start doing the makeup or after? Oh, before. We just kind of start it. I, I have like, thinking. you know, I have different aromatherapies. I have lavender, I have mint, I have, um, sure. I call this one happy oil, neroli oil. I really like, um, I, I have a, it's sometimes if it's appropriate and I can have a candle with me, like I have right here. So it's like one of my faves. Love this one. So I got a kind of a weird question because that's where my brain goes, being a magician and everything. Things are funny like that to me. <laughs> Is if a person's like all tense when you start working on them, they could possibly have like one eyebrow up high or something. And then if you did their makeup when they relaxed, it would look funny, right? So they need no, to be I, relaxed. I get that. Well, I usually start, start I usually start um, every time I work with a client, I get, I get some hand cream and I just start massaging their hands for a second to just moisturize their hand, but also to just kind of let out. them, get them to breathe. And sure. so by the time I work on their face, everything's fine. Got it. Yep. So I, I don't like to do these too long because I want people to be able to consume them all and get to know who you are and how to get a hold of you and all that kind of stuff. And so do you have anything that you can offer people to like, you got to like a how-to guide or something like that that you have on your website or anything like that? Well, you can go to christinaflack.com and to prettygirlmakeup.com and you can see, you know, videos and, you know, different uh, projects that I've worked on using different, you know, different products of my lip gloss. And so they absolutely can. And then the, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and okay. 
Okay. There's all kinds of fun stuff there for people to take a peek at. Very cool. Yeah. Well, again, I don't want to take too much of your time. Oh, and then also um, sepsis.org. I'm, you know, I speak about sepsis. So if people Could want to go to sepsis. Could you spell that? S-E-P-S-I-S dot org. And there you can look for the signs of sepsis, which are either feeling super cold or hot. Um, you might have an infection in your, some part, part of your body and you're, you know, you could have a cut or, you know, a sinus infection. There's a different form because sepsis is a, uh, it's an infection of the blood, which attacks all your organs. Wow. So, um, and then let's see, I, and then M is mental decline. You just are not in your right mind. It's hard to rouse you to get up. And then E is you feel you're in excruciating pain. So you feel like you're dying because because you kind of are. Um, if you get on the right antibiotic and the right protocol, you can absolutely survive sepsis, but it's a time is of the essence. You can't wait for tomorrow with sepsis because there isn't a tomorrow. It is a very ugly, aggressive disease that if not treated quickly, there is loss of life, unfortunately. Oh, totally that's good. what happened any, to my husband. And any, I don't want anyone else to feel the way I feel. Got it. I can see how that can happen with because the, the breath you can't exist very long without breath. I mean, you can go for without water and without food, but without air. Yeah. It's a big one. Exactly. Well, on a happier note, I really appreciate you taking the time today to be on Synergy Cafe with me. And Thank I'm going to beam this out to the universe. So I really appreciate it. If you want to do Thank another one down so the road, much. we can do that too. And I will send you a link to Anytime. this. Anytime. Wonderful. Anytime. Okay, thank you very I would much love to be on your show. Let me know. Thanks again. Have Thanks. a good day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.